All right. Well, it, it happened again. So um, I rebooted everything so we could start again. The, the last few times this happened um, it was okay after we rebooted it. So um, what is this? I don't know what that package is. What's that? What is that doing there? All right. Anyway, so let me go back and get my slides. So anyway, so I thought you'd find that very interesting. Now, it didn't mention this at the end, but Fisher did a lot of intense calculations after the party was over. And what he was essentially trying to find out is what is the probability of her getting all of them right by just pure guesswork? So it turns out, and we're not going to um, see this just yet, but I'll just tell you that the probability of that happening was about 0.39% less than 1%. So he concluded that she does know what she's talking about when it comes to tea, whether the tea is first or the milk is first. So next time you have tea, think about that. See if you can really tell the difference. I don't know. I mean, I usually use lemon, so I don't know. But um, she said she could tell. Well, it's pretty clear that she could tell because she was able to correctly identify all eight of them. So it's just, you know, it's an interesting uh, case study and it did lead to a lot of important results. You remember, this is the early 20th century, so a lot of the statistics that we use now uh, had not yet been developed. So uh, this, this is kind of an interesting result and uh, helped advance this, the cause of uh, statistics, uh, or certainly the uh, uses of it. So I'll add a conclusion here. Um, um, the lady was able to correctly identify all eight cups. The probability of this happening through guessing is about 0.39%. And again, we, we're not going to, not just yet can I show you how this is done, but down the road, we'll, we'll come back and revisit this. So that means that, yeah, I mean, it's still theoretically possible, but the chances of it are so low that we can pretty much conclude that she knows what she's talking about. So anyway, um, all of this discussion we just had is about a branch of mathematics called combinatorics. I just want to mention that um, uh, combinatorics is, is very useful in a lot of disciplines, especially probability theory. And you'll see it a lot in computer science. So if you were majoring in computer science, this could potentially show up in one of your classes. And uh, so combinatorics is the science of counting. Arrangements, permutations, and combinations are all part of the field of combinatorics, which can be applied to areas such as computer science and statistics. And it's just plain fun. You know, I mean, really, when was the last time in one of your classes you were talking about drinking tea or putting gummy bears on your ice cream, um, you can see we have the opportunity to do a lot of fun stuff uh, with combinatorics. Okay, so anyway, with all that being said, we're about to dive into the area of probability theory itself. Now, this is what we're really focused on in this chapter, probability theory, which is basically a way of assigning probabilities to random outcomes. For example, what if I wanna know the likelihood that the Dow Jones Industrial Average will end up gaining value throughout the year. In other words, when the year is over, it's higher than it was the last year. Or what if I wanna know the probability that it's going to rain tomorrow? Well, you know, the weathermen have these uh, very elaborate models that they lean on. Um, you know, behind the scenes, when you see somebody doing the weather, uh, they've already produced all kinds of very complicated models to help us determine the likelihood that it will rain tomorrow or snow or, uh, just be cloudy. It's all coming down to probability theory because there's no way of knowing for sure what's going to happen. 
but at least we can get a good sense of it. In other words, if you're told, let's say you go to the internet and, um, and you ask for the weather in your area and it says tomorrow it's probably going to rain. Well, you can be pretty confident that not that it's guaranteed to happen, but there's a pretty real chance that they've got it right because you know the uh, the um, technology keeps improving and the math keeps improving, and it's not going to be the case that they're going to be way off. Well, not likely. Like in the past, sometimes they were they were way off, but now the the science of meteorology has advanced to the point where they do a pretty good job of telling us what's coming, although only for a few days in advance. But everything they do is ultimately based on probability theory. Because again, there's no way of knowing what's going to happen with the weather. It can change so quickly. Um, so probability theory shows up in a lot of areas of our daily lives. Um, the weather is the one that came to mind first because we're all affected by it, but because we know that weather is very unpredictable. So um, in, in many other areas, like in, in investing in the stock market involves a lot of uncertainty, of course, and it would be nice if we could find ways to determine how likely it is that a certain stock will go up or that the entire market will go up. These are all helpful ideas that could help us make money. Anyway, so the whole idea of probability theory is that some process is taking place, like the weather, and we know or we don't know what's going to happen, but we can assign probabilities to what might happen. Okay, that's our challenge, assigning probabilities to what might happen. For example, when uh, the weather forecaster says 80% chance of rain tomorrow, where did that come from? That was based on probability theory. So we start out with the notion of a random experiment. Now here we're gonna be looking at more um, not so much observing the weather or observing the stock market, we're gonna think in terms of what's called a random experiment, which is something that's repeated over and over again and where we can assess the probabilities of different things happening. So a random experiment is a process where outcomes are being generated in such a way that we know what could happen, but we don't know what will happen. Okay, so that's all it takes to be considered a random experiment. Now, it's, there's some very straightforward examples that I can give you, which will make this a little less abstract. Here's a simple one. What if my experiment consists of flipping a coin 10 times? And I wanna know how many heads I'm likely to get. Well, um, I certainly don't know what will happen before I actually flip the coins, but I can figure out what could happen or what is likely to happen because I know that each flip of the coin has a 50% chance of turning up heads and 50% chance of turning up tails. With that knowledge, I can then sit down and determine the likelihood of getting, let's say six heads or three heads or four heads because I understand how this coin flipping experiment works. And that means I can then sit down and develop a formula that lets me calculate the likelihood of different number of heads. Now, um, we're not gonna, well, we're, we're gonna keep our examples very basic, but you know, if you were to take a full semester of statistics, you would see how you can calculate a lot of different kinds of probabilities. Now, I'm not saying you have to, um, I'm just saying that if you did, you would be introduced to a lot of these different situations where you want to calculate something based on what's called a probability distribution. All right, so um, anyway, so uh, let's see, this is a this is the new section. So you know what, I'll tell you what, why don't we stop here? To, what is today, Thursday? Yeah, let's just keep going for a while. Now, I just want to mention that the final exam is based on 11 and 12. Those are the only last two chapters that we're going to cover. In the meantime, you are working on your second midterms and uh, the final will be just on 11 and 12. So we actually have ways to go before we have to worry about another exam. 
And when it does come, it'll be, a, be based just on 11 and 12. It is not comprehensive. Let's put it that way. Not comprehensive, just 11 and just 12. All right, just those two together. So we're going to finish. By the time December rolls around, we want to have finished chapters 11 and 12, all the problem sets and the sample final. Uh, I don't know when our finals are, but we can worry about that later. It's quite a ways off in the future. Uh, I would say a good five, six weeks even before we have to think about that. All right, so in the meantime, let's just carry on. We'll continue to learn more and more about probability theory. And when this chapter is over, we'll then start to dive into some basic statistics. Okay, you wanna learn as much as you can about statistics because it's one field that applies to almost every area of your life. Um, statistics are everywhere. Uh, and we'll talk about that as we go along. Okay, we'll introduce as many examples as possible, but statistics underlies a lot of what we do every day. Okay, it's, it's just so widespread and so important that I wanna make sure that you have some stats background uh, before you go on to the rest of your uh, program. And it's all ultimately based on probability theory. So anyway, so I guess we'll stop here. Oh, and uh, so you can tell everybody about the lady and the tea if you want. Um, I think they'll find that interesting. And uh, so she confounded the other people at the party. Remember, they were staring at each other and like, what, is she crazy? Oh no, she got the last laugh. She was right. So that's kind of satisfying. So anyway, so uh, I guess I'll see you all next time. Uh, quick question. Oh, yes, go ahead. Before you go. Um, okay, so I checked the email. So like, did you send back the exam answers yet to the first one? Uh, no, oh no, that's a good point. I'm going to make a note of that. I think you're right. I was so preoccupied with getting it done that I may have forgotten. I'm just... I'm, I'm not rushing. I'm, I'm just, no, I'm no, just, no, no. just I'm wondering. I list of things to do. No, yeah. Definitely not uh, trying to speed you on that. And then for the second, um, sec okay, yeah. The second one's due Monday yeah. morning. Yeah. All right, perfect. All right. See you next week. Take care. Okay. All right. Bye. Uh, professor? Yes, go ahead. Um, hold on. Give me. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I just had a question about the exam. Yes. Okay. So, well, two questions, more so about two, two of the questions. Um, so for question one, um, do you want us to find all of like the simple interest, the compound interest and the total interest and choose from like those options? Oh, let, let me, let me let yeah. remind myself what uh, question you're referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So question one. So midterm number two. Um, here it is. Oh, yes. Um, and yeah, so from uh, those, I picked the lowest. Okay, the no. The lowest. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, what you're supposed to do, these are those are APRs you're being given. You're supposed to calculate the EARs and choose the oh, okay. pick the one that's higher. Uh, oh, pick the one that's higher? Yes. Well, because sure, you, that means you're getting more interest. Okay. All right. That's what no I mean. So for 4% compound and monthly, that's an APR. Turn that into an EAR. Same thing with 3.8% compound daily. And one of them will be higher than the other. And that's... Uh. And that's the one he should choose. Right. Got it. Because okay, yeah, I was it. confused with that. And I was like, uh, what should uh, I do? <laughs> I, I guess it could have been written a little more clearly, but um, the logic no. is one yeah, of yeah, them yeah. will have a Yeah, a I definitely understand. Yeah. Okay. All I right, definitely good. understand that now. And in question seven, um, let me see. Oh, let me get my book for this one. <laughs> oh, this is a future value problem. Oh, a future value? Yeah, I knew yes. that. And I had the formula for the future value. So um, when I calculated the future value, am I supposed to multiply it by 10? Because no, it's like- No, it's a 10 So once value. I get the future value, I'm done with the question. Yeah, because you're gonna, then you're gonna compare it to 1.3 million. So in other words, you're calculating the future value of a 10 year annuity. If it doesn't mm -hmm. equal at least $1.3 million, then he will not reach his goal. If it's at least 1.3 million, then he will reach his goal. 
And if he's short, then I have to um, subtract what he uh, right. what he wants by yes. that future value. Oh, right. okay. So got in other words, it, got if, it. if the future value of this annuity is only $1 million, that means he's going to be short by $300,000. Yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah, I was so confused by that. I was like, because okay. I came up with the three different possibilities. And oh, I was like, no. which one is the no, correct no. one? No, just, All right. just calculate the future value of a 10-year annuity and compare it with $1.3 million. Okay, got it, got it. Thank okay. you so much. You're Thank welcome. you. That was a big else? <laughs> no, that was that was just all. That was just all. I was a little okay. confused. Well, about, I'm sure you're you. not the only one who wondered about that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what? I mean, when I write this thing, it looks clear to me, and then I realize maybe it it could have been explained yeah. just a little better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Anyone else? All right. So see you all on Monday. <laughs>